Welcome to the madhouse. <laughs> Alright, what is going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of the Mindsword Podcast. Me and Sammy, we're back in the studio. We're back with another episode of Summer of Guests. Um, they're going to be on the podcast in a couple of weeks at uh, Midsummer Screen, but we got them a little bit earlier because just about an hour ago, because when this is released, they just posted up their new short and I'm going to let them introduce themselves, who they are, what they did, um, because this is if you have not seen it by now, um, you should go watch it and yeah, come back. Stop what you're doing and, and watch, watch. Go watch. <laughs> go watch their short because it is amazing. But let's introduce our guest from Fractured Compass Productions. We got Jacqueline. We've Hello. got Bree, and okay. we've got Alicia. Is that right? Did I get that right? All of it right? Nice. We're good. All right. Hey. Uh, let's talk a little bit about um, this project you guys made. So go ahead and introduce what it is, um, everything about it, because this is something that uh, when I watched it, I was like, this is this is awesome. This is something that the little guys made, and it's something that's fe film festival worthy. This is this is awesome. So just go ahead and talk to us a little bit about this project. Ooh, film festival worthy. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's a compliment. <laughs> Thank you. That's very nice of you. Yeah. Um, so basically, uh, this is SCP-825. If you guys aren't familiar with SCP, it is a website that you can go on and that people can put up different stories of basically different anomalies that are in our world uh, that need to be contained. And the foundation, the SCP Foundation, contains these anomalies. Um, and there's thousands of them. I think they're in the 4,000. Are they in the right 4,000? Yeah, 4, yeah, there's there's thousands of them. And we specifically chose SCP-825 based on the fact that we wanted to do something that had to do with nightmares or fears. fears. Um, so we're like, well, what SCP does that? And we found SCP-825 who any any time you put SCP-825 on, whether it's in your head, we used we used the helmet just to be put on the head, um, but it can be your hand, it can be anything if you want to stick your foot in it, whatever. Um, <laughs> and it will, <laughs> it will uh, put you into hallucination of your deepest darkest fears. And I think being a fan of like Halloween and horror and things like that, um, we're all kind of interested in what makes people tick with their fears <laughs> right yeah um so that's that's basically what this whole short film is about it's about them putting on this helmet this experiment of some sort seeing what what ticks their fears and we we absolutely over here we love the nightmare sequences that 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 we saw in this short film um and i really want to get into those because I, I would love to hear some some stories of of, of you know how actors got prepared to do these scenes um what was going through their mind doing these scenes because there's a couple of moments where i was like i don't even know if i'd be able to do that just filming this thing like and i was yeah. just and i was just tripping out on, on a lot of like the actors they just they they did it and it was it was it was awesome so let, let's get let's jump right into um to this so we you know i i love the whole the whole the idea of of this uh, this experiment going on it's got for me in a way it's got a vibe of like a secretive kind of like area 51 kind of thing where like this yeah. is a very secretive thing no one really knows about it they're pulling in subjects from like outside and stuff this is this is mm -hmm. a, an, an awesome idea um the doctor though let's talk a little bit about the doctor let's talk about the doctor <laughs> so, <laughs> this character in my opinion was this was a, a, a just a very good character development the, the character at one point you saw 
how evil she was, how 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 much she wanted to do the experiment, and how much she wanted results. I, I really loved how much you put into that character um, because it really brought the whole short to life to me. Because when you see someone as sinister as this doctor, you start thinking to yourself, "There's probably people like that in this world." Oh, definitely. And when Jacqueline was telling me how nice this person is in real life, I was tripping out because she plays a phenomenal character in the short. And, and just for her to say how nice she is in real life, it, I, I would have to like actually talk to her myself. So explain to us uh, what you went through to get into this character because this is re a really good character. Uh, so pretty much for me, Jacqueline and Brie gave me the idea of looking at, it was Handmaid's Tale, right? And Lydia from Handmaid's Tale, yeah. And she was a straight up snitchy snitch. Like she was just the most vile, awful person because that's not who I am. So I had to pull from somewhere because yeah. I'm like, I don't know how to be mean in <laughs> any form in of any the word, form. you know? So I'm sitting there trying to figure out okay what like how am i supposed to talk or scorn or i think what i tried to do most was just be as monotone and like soulless if that's a good enough word as possible where it's like i don't care because i think everybody's experienced moments like that where you're like i absolutely don't care at this point in time so bringing that experience forward throughout the whole thing was not only difficult, but I feel like that's what I pulled. Definitely, definitely. Most, so and you succeeded. Well, thanks. <laughs> yeah, I would agree. I would agree. The soullessness very did much come out on that. Um, in terms of like, she really felt like each one of those people was not a person to her that she was interacting with, but rather just a test subject. Um, and I think that really gain credibility the way that she references each one of them is just by a number basically mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and this is a question i have and maybe you don't have an answer to this one was her soullessness really driven by past circumstances or do you think it was the nature of her job i think more so the nature of her job because in the beginning it there's that little scene with her and like her higher up essentially dad john dad john <laughs> yeah but <laughs> They are having a conversation where he's saying, under any circumstance, do what you have to do to fulfill this job. So she's sitting there like, okay, well, I've got to do whatever means are necessary. And if I have to use people and I have to like essentially destroy lives, then I'm going to have to do that in order to save myself and preserve my title as the doctor. There's one scene I have to talk about, and it's one of my favorites in in the short, and that's and that's the scene where we go into um, going to Jacqueline's head uh, during the nightmare scene. That scene alone was probably one of the freakiest things I've ever seen, as far as uh, seeing that doctor, uh, you know, a phobia of getting drowned. That yeah, that I think that I could say I can speak for a lot of people in this world that 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 is a terrifying nightmare to be a part of. Um, but I think what adds on to the fear of that was having the doctor um with with the like the the snake kind of like demonic eyes which i thought was really really cool uh tell me well, like how you guys how you guys you guys you guys bringing that you guys pulled that off fantastic um tell me a little bit about how that scene went down uh filming that and and you know what what I, now that one looked like you had to get a whole set of mindset going into that character a little bit that one looked a little bit more evil than what we were seeing already yeah, and I feel like that was something, which is weird to say, but that was something that was a little more easy just because I've been able to play like a more, I don't know, more like a monster type character. Right, because you, yeah. you were able to pull from Haunt. Exactly. Think, to do that yeah. one. From like being, not necessarily zombie-esque, but just being, encapsulating a monster, encapsulating somebody who's here to completely destroy somebody else's mind or life, which yeah. is kind of sad, but true. <laughs> Yeah. It's a good thing we're friends. <laughs> yeah, good thing we're friends. <laughs> that scene was actually written overnight. We had to completely change it from what we had originally, yeah. uh, which was very complicated. And we went and literally sat in that chair that you see everybody chained to. And I yeah. sat there for about an hour and a half having to rewrite that scene and just go step by step and sit inside Site 19 and be like, 
where can we take this? And it's not just about, it's not just about being drowned in that scene. It's more about um, like not having control yeah, of anything control. Mm -hmm. that's going on with you at that point. And you have a very strong character who seems kind of put together and kind of like in charge of everybody the whole time go from being cool, calm and collected to actually begging. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, and I and I noticed that with her character in this uh, short that she was kind of like, she didn't want to show fear. She didn't want to show that she was like, you know, scared or something, even though deep down you knew she was actually terrified being there. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I really like that aspect of this character where it, it, secretly she was a badass and, and she proves that. Um, which I I really like when when they show that, but I, there's I want to talk a little bit about those now those nightmare scenes. Now, me and Sammy have a couple theories as to um as to what what they what they some of them mean. Um, one of which of course is with uh, the very last nightmare scene that we see with um one one seven no one seven one. Um, mm -hmm. We okay so like because with the other two nightmare scenes we kind of put it together where it's like okay yeah snakes uh, and stuff like that like. I can see them people getting scared of that. Uh, there's probably more of a symbolic meaning behind it, and we wanted to know, besides what we actually saw in the nightmare sequences, was there more of a symbolic meaning meaning to each one of them other than like phobias of getting scared of stuff? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think, I mean, I don't know how how do you feel because for me, honestly, the snake scene is primal. is pretty primal. It's just that primal fear. And to be honest with you, um, I had a friend who runs a foundation for uh called scar and i was like hey man people are afraid of snakes can like can we snakes? can we use your snakes <laughs> and like it was that's pretty that's pretty much how that kind of came down and like so th i think that one for me is kind of just a basic fear and then i think that's why it was the first one is because it's just that basic fear of being you know tied down and just having all these snakes crawl over you um and we had about five or six five big ones and then the two little ones yeah and two promo. small ones for the promo um and they're all rescues too those were all rescue snakes sweet sweet sweet. yeah sweet. and they're really they're very um used to the camera yes and they're all really nice they're all camera. <laughs> they're all really <laughs> sweet like, for you? <laughs> like my second... inner my inner indiana jones just went like uh, <laughs> yeah. out, uh you know yeah. snakes <laughs> and um, we, we actually almost had an actual venomous rattlesnake um along with it uh, but that didn't quite work out so maybe maybe next time but <laughs> it was very rainy and very cold that day so they were and super chill. snakes don't like the cold <laughs> yeah so it was a lot to get them to kind of move but um then obviously the drowning scene you have that that loss of control and that like not having any ability to do anything about anything um and I then, was chained to the wall for three hours. Yeah. And <laughs> oh my God, three hours. Yeah, three yeah, hours. These, these scenes were, yeah, it was about, it was one scene took about two and a half to three hours to do. So she was cold, she was wet, she was chained to that wall in that position, on my like knees. on her knees the entire time. Um, that was not comfortable. <laughs> we had that scene. And then I think the last one for me is just that feel of, loss and alone and like emptiness it's like, not really about being um we took away everything from yeah her. we like, took her two protective like parent figures took them took them away and then now it's like your own personal demons not being able to do anything about it in this vast right. we made it look bigger than it was it was still just oh, the yeah. room oh, but yeah. this vast space being chased by something and there's nothing you can do about it and are these like, if you guys can hear the whispers, like, are these the whispers actually like, you know, lost souls that are around you? Or are these just the whispers in your head? So we kind of leave that up to like interpretation to like what the person feels. I mean, we've all felt alone, you know, even yeah. in a crowd. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, no, um, no, because I, like I said, these nightmare sequences were, were really well produced and stuff like that. And I really enjoyed them. Um, Brie, let's talk a little bit about your character. Now, your character is like, a, some would say, like, kind of like a, a, would you say, like a guard in a way? My, yeah, my character is the was the quintessential regular SCP guard commander. So if you ever look up like SCP guard, that is exactly what they look like. They were all white with, you know, they look like peacekeepers with sure. black, the yeah, with the black <laughs> vest and the black helmets and everything. They've got their guns and their black boots. 
kind of just ready to go. Um, so let's talk I, a little bit about um, <laughs> the traitor. Yeah, the, the traitor. Yeah. Um, so that was something that it was very unexpected for me. I was not expecting that, and and I love when when something grabs my attention where it's like you're you're focused on one character, um, or just many characters, and you know you you think something one one you're, you think you're going down one path, and then it just curves ball you and takes you down to another. Something that I liked about your character is she kind of stayed. Um, in her form of, 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 of a guard throughout the entire thing and she was staying loyal up until that scene. Um, explain to me um, how that was uh, as far as, you know, uh, being that character of going from, you know, starting as like the bad person and ending up saving the other people. Like how, how did that, how did how'd you get into kind of a mindset for that? So pretty much like what my character, what I kind of felt was that I'm part of the serpent's hand which is basically uh, a secret society within the foundation that basically only wants to cause chaos. Um, and if you notice in the beginning, when I walk out of the room, like she shakes her head at me, like when we're kind of doing that, it's me and her doing that dialogue. Yeah. And I walk out, she shakes her head. We kind of despise each other anyways, but I'm going to be loyal to her to the point where I, my, you know, the just the means meet the end, you know? Um, so did I feel for these characters that we took? I wasn't really happy about them issuing protocol 12 of us taking, um, the civilians. I didn't like that because SCP foundation usually takes from jails, people that are, have committed crimes and things like that. So I wasn't really like hip on protocol 12 in the first place. Um, but I knew at that point that we were going to cause a breach. So even though I wasn't happy about protocol 12, I don't really care about these guys too much. I just am using them to the fact like, Hey, you know what? We're going to cause a breach in the end in the first place, but I'm not too hip on protocol 12. So I'm going to try to save your lives anyways. But I do go through. <laughs> with shooting Kevin in the head. Kyle. Or Kyle. Oh, yeah, yes. you did shoot Kevin. I shot Kyle. <laughs> you shot both of us. I shot, <laughs> you know, I shot Kevin. I have to go through all these things and it, it's, it's, it's like, for me, like my character is like, it sickens me and I'm going through this, but I have to, you know, I have to do this in order to cause this breach and to maybe bring the foundation down. Definitely, definitely. Um, <laughs> and I, and I do like the, of course, the, the turn at the end that was, like I said, twist I didn't see coming. Um, Me neither. Like, <laughs> yeah, in fact, she did not we know. We kept her completely in the dark about that. That that was uh, you, uh, <laughs> you, uh, you, you Tom Holland spider man her, man. You kept her. <laughs> yeah. When that uh, gun went in her face, she just went up against the wall and was like, what is happening? <laughs> like, she thought, a, she thought a, a wedding was going on when really it was a funeral. So yeah, uh, yes. <laughs> um, I, I, I love it though when when you when people do stuff like that, especially in film, because then you get more of a raw reaction where it, it they're more of a it's a more of a surprise than when you know not letting them know. Like um, I think there for a good example would be in um, the movie Goodfellas when of course uh, Joe Pesci goes off on um, what's his name. I don't know. The other guy. I forget, <laughs> I forget his name. Ah, oh, shit. It's on the top of my head. I'm gonna, I'll probably remember it later. But he goes the, off on... Is that the scene where they're all sitting around the table? The table, yeah. Yeah, and they kind of, like, makes them all nervous. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And 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 that was completely uh, uh, improvised by Joe Pesci. He kept going, and, you know, Scorsese told him, no matter what happens, don't break character because... Yeah. Um, you know, we're, we're gonna keep filming and we want to get everybody's raw reaction. So I like it when, of course, uh, when, when, when you see that in movies and, and, and shorts and then whenever, whatever you're filming, because I feel like it gives a more raw reaction to, like I said, a, a surprise suspense team that you didn't see coming much like the audience, the actors were unaware of it too. So I, and I, and I really appreciate, uh, stuff when that happens. So thank you for that. That was Raw reaction was was priceless, <laughs> but she was she was unaware of it. She was like, "Is this, is this part of the?" Everyone, so. it was great. I just stood there like, "What's going on?" <laughs> but hey, but you kept your cool, which was cool. I mean, you kept in character, in which that was awesome. So, um, all right, Jacqueline, let's talk about your character. Cool. Um, Hi. I was a character. So, I was a character. <laughs> she was the uh, one seven two. 
Yeah. Um, your yeah. character was, of course, uh, ultimately the badass at the end. Um, I liked how your character <laughs> as well was um, kind of like fearless. She didn't want to show fear in, in the eyes of the enemy. Um, you know, she tried to stay as, as much as away from it as possible, even when they, when they, when they did the gunshot didn't phase her uh you know it took a lot out of her just to get to the point of what what makes her fear how is it like getting into a character like that as far as i have to of course be someone who i can't be phased by this woman but secretly i, I might be somewhat afraid but i don't want to show it like how do, how do you get into that i don't know i feel like that's a lot of we slapped you a lot Guys, you slapped her. You guys, guys did slap her. Beat the absolute shit out of me. <laughs> we would come up to her and be like, Pff. I'd be like, okay, that, Actually, that was one way that I got into character is I'd have her literally start just like, just trying to make me angry, and then we'd start the scene. So, that, uh, I, I think yeah, that the, the anger out of you is just raw, which I, I love it too. It, it, and it makes, that's probably, I, and I don't mean to say this, but probably a good thing she did that, right? Just to get it, the rise out of you. Because I think it did help kind of get your adrenaline going a little bit because oh, you yeah. are slightly irritated and then you, you do the scene and you know we, we did the, the gun hitting me in the head I don't know 45 times oh, yeah. so that was irritating <laughs> <laughs> so I just I don't know I, I think I pulled from how I feel I would react in a situation like that because I do try to remain fairly calm and collected but it's not hard to piss me off so there's that like balance I don't know I, I feel like a, a lot of what you're seeing is what I would hope I would be able to do if that situation was real. Yeah. But at the same time, yeah, that situation would be terrifying. So yeah. it's, oh, yeah. it's playing that balancing game of how do I talk to this person mm -hmm. who secretly I'm like kind of shitting my pants about, but not trying to show that. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, which is why we put her in that nightmare scene Right, which too. is exactly why we put you in it because you're terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> You're so scary. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. try. Let's talk a little bit more um, about your nightmare scene too, because you like I want to touch back on the the fact that you were there for three hours, if not more. Yeah. If not more, um, and that alone had to make you, which probably drove the character even more um, into the you know being your character. It tro it probably drove you getting frustrated at, at some points where you were just like, okay, I'm in this chain. I'm, I'm sitting here, I'm, I'm drenched, wet, cold. Um, you think that helped with the character more to kind of bring that, you know, raw reaction of being scared and, and just kind of like frustrated and stuff like that? Absolutely. Like without yeah. a doubt. Because pulling on those handcuffs for three hours, it starts to hurt. Oh yeah. Being wet and having water go up your nose and down your ears, oh, yeah. it sucks. Yeah. I mean, and she's, when she was doing all of her scenes with me, when Kyle was doing all the scenes with me, they're all very gentle, mm -hmm. which is, thank you. It was very nice <laughs> of you guys. But, you know, you've got to do the take five or six times to make sure that you have it. So, yeah, the, a lot of that did play into it. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to start feeling frustrated. You don't want to be wet anymore. You don't want to be cold anymore. It was Honestly, it was being on my knees that long that was, mm -hmm. that was the worst. Yeah, I bet. Um, so let's talk about this ending um, because I'm curious. Now... I, I, I love the way it ended um, because it sets up for a potential sequel. Yes, true. If you ever, if you ever decide to do one or, you know, you just want to leave it up in the air and just kind of at that, um, let, let's talk a little bit about it. So what were you guys, what was, the, was that always the original plan for the ending? Was that to just set it up to kind of have like the big bad come out eventually and this is who's really running things? Uh, come confront the doctor and stuff like that because I felt the confrontation between the big bad at the end and and the doctor was kind of like it was a terrifying moment. It was one of those moments where you know you're you're seeing this 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 person in this mask and you're just like, and it's the, the room's flashing red. You know, it's kind of has that dark sense into it. It kind of gives the effect of even more uh, a more scary vibe to it. How 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 are you feeling as the doctor as as you were confronted by this person? Uh yeah. How are you feeling? When, I feel when Cameron came in when as, as, as SCP-49. Yeah. Honestly, just watching him walk in, because he's a pretty tall dude, so I don't know if the camera was able to even like pick that up, but it was terrifying. Just looking <laughs> at him, I was like, Because <laughs> you, that was the first time you've met Cameron. That's true. Was yeah. That was the first time she ever met him, mm -hmm. and we brought in like this 6'4 dude. Yeah, out of character, completely fine, normal dude, but the second he threw on that mask and the 
the yeah. gown and everything. Oh no 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no yeah, and the the oh my gosh, the voice. voice so terrifying. Yeah. So Cameron naturally has an English accent. Um. So and he loves SCP-049, which is the plague doctor that we saw. Mm-hmm. And when my because I used to work with him, and then my brother still works with him, and he was he was just like kind of not begging but he was like i will do this for you like i will do this role <laughs> let me do this mm-hmm. and we brought him in he came up with all of his own lines yeah it was amazing out of nowhere <laughs> and just did the scene I, I think that was the shortest scene that we've ever filmed because it was just he was so on it and so were you like you guys did such a good job in that last part yeah but it I mean, was yeah. definitely hard reversing roles to become the victim though Cause I was like this whole time throughout the whole thing, I'm acting as the big bad guy. And then all of a sudden now I have to play this like cowardly lion. Like, what do I do? Like I'm pretty much SOL. There's nothing yeah. I can do. I'm right. facing my, my fate at this point. Which wh- I thought that was a cool transition at the end too, where it was like, yeah, throughout this whole, you know, this whole short, you were the, the one, you know, doing the experiments and, and writing stuff down and, and just not really, you know, you were just kind of doing this because it was your job. And then at the end, it, the, the roles reversed. The, the big bad comes in and you're just like, OK, now it's it's serious. This is different. Now I'm terrified. Um, and, and I really enjoyed that that um, that ending scene going on to. Uh, he enjoyed you dying. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Me too. It was, it was time for her to die. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, one thing I really enjoyed was this overarching theme of control, I think. I think throughout the entire short is really this battle of who's going to be in control. Is it going to be the victim? Is it going to be the doctor? Um, and what happens when you get control? And what happens when you lose control? Um, and I, I really enjoyed to see how the characters responded to each of those situations. Yeah, nice. That's awesome. Thank that's you. A, that's yeah, a great way to look at it. Great way to look there, at it. There is a control power struggle throughout the that entire time. room. The whole time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so when uh, I'm going to go just based on my, my review and stuff like that, when I was approached to screen the trailer, um, I was beyond happy because I had been, I, I remember actually you guys announcing this project and then I've been kind of following it ever since you guys announced it. Oh, so I, I, I've been following it for a while. And then when I was approached to, to view the trailer and give feedback on it, I was beyond happy that you guys even approached me on that to do that. So a big thank you to you guys to uh, letting me uh, watch the trailer early, watch the, the, the cut of the movie early. Um, I w- was just beyond happy. I, I remember uh, the night she sent me the, f- the full movie. I literally came in this room, turned off all my lights, put my speakers <laughs> loud as hell, and I, and I put it on my computer and I, and I watched it all the way through. And I, uh, I was excited. I was a little kid on Christmas. Uh, I, I, you know, I never got, for one, I never got invited to actually screen something privately. So, like, the exclusiveness for me, I was just like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm doing this. I can't believe I'm doing this. This is cool. <laughs> um, so, so, one, that was cool. But just to, the, the fact that I got to screen something early and give an early review on it, um, my honest review wasn't paid to do any of it. That, that was just how I legitimately felt about watching their film. Um, what was just awesome. Um, I always judge. Uh, movies based on a, a a viewer and as a, a as a like a filmmaker because um, you know there's always two different ways and both exceeded expectations. I love the of course being a viewer watching it as a as a viewer it was awesome but watching it as a filmmaker was good too because not only did you guys uh, excel on the acting it was it was amazing um, the actors did their part everybody was legitimate terrified and I felt terrified for them I was rooting for people I was not rooting for people um and <laughs> that's that's just it's just one of those it's one of those it's one of those just movies where you can where you can do that you can just you know you have fun with it you root for the good guys you root for the bad guys you don't root for anyone it does, you know so so i had fun doing that and then i i love the filmmaking aspect of it um from different angles of shots made the set designs were awesome um a lot of the like your props like the helmet me and him immediately when we when we when i watched it with him for the first time i was like that's a dope helmet i would love to have that like in the background somewhere right here um so so that that was that was just amazing and what you guys created here is is something good i cannot wait to see what you guys can do in the future with uh, future projects if there's a sequel to this um, I cannot wait to see what that's like. Um, very excited to see what what's to come if there is a sequel. 
Um, yeah. Because from what I saw at the ending, I was hoping for a sequel. Um, it and... was, I'll tell you this: it was made to have a to have sequel. a sequel. So I will let I will tell you that. Um, but it probably will not be within this year because this one was a little expensive. Damn, <laughs> this took a long time yeah, too. Took a while. Hey, some of, some of the best movies take the best uh, the best and longest of time. So. Much like Jordan Peele, I suggest you guys take your time and don't rush it because what you guys did with this project was, it looked like it was the time was taken, the blood, sweat, and tears were put into it from both the actors and, and the production uh, crew and everything. Um, money was put into it, obviously, and, this, and it looked really good. Um, this wasn't shot in, like, obviously someone's basement. This was, like, you put time and putting in the set together. Um, and and I and I and I really really thought that was awesome. That puts like the little guys on the map. That says, not only can like Quentin Tarantino and Martin Scorsese do stuff like that, but the little guys can do it too. So, I, I really want to like to thank you for a film like this where it kind of motivates young filmmakers like us to go out there and pursue stuff. That's how I looked at it. <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank man. you. Yeah, that thank you. I appreciate that, man. Yeah, no problem. So. Ooh. With that being said, um, like I said, I enjoyed it, and I hoped everyone who watched it and and you know was waiting as anticipated as I was, I hope everyone enjoyed it. Um, I'm hoping if everyone's watching this interview right now that they they've already watched it, because this was more of a behind the scenes kind of spoiler interview. Um, and I hope that I didn't spoil anything. If you haven't watched it, I'm very sorry. <laughs> but uh, I'm pretty sure if you if you're here right now, you watched it and you wanted to see some Q and A. And, and stuff with that with the actors and, and the people who are behind it. So thank you to these uh, ladies for putting this together and all the other crew that couldn't make it on the podcast today, uh, actors who couldn't be here. Um, thank you to all of them. They uh, <laughs> did an amazing job. Um, the one thing I want to end it with, because um, this is the Mindless Horror Podcast, we do a little bit of horror news, and I want to get everyone's opinion on this because I'm super excited for this. Um, Back to back Halloween movies. What do we think about that? Did you hear that announcement? Today, Blumhouse came out and announced. Universal and Blumhouse came out and announced two Halloween movies being made. The first one's going to be called Halloween Kills, October 16th, 2020 release date. The second one, which will be the third and final installment of the Blumhouse trilogy for Halloween, is going to be Halloween Ends, which is coming out October 15th, 2021. I'm a huge Michael Myers fan. I don't know about this guy. This guy, I've seen him. I have seen them. You've seen them. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I love Michael Myers. What are your uh, ladies' thoughts about, about these movies coming out, if you guys are Michael Myers fans or not? I mean, Michael Myers is one of the big ones, but I wish Mike was here because he would just be like... Mike would be... Chattering be, his yeah, head off. He'd be beside himself. <laughs> All I know like about Halloween... Is that Michael Myers is in Dead by Daylight, and I freaking hate going against him. That's all I can really. That's Dead my by Daylight game. is fantastic. It I is. love that game. <laughs> I hate playing against him because you can't hear his heartbeat. You can't hear anything. So yeah. why? I mean, but how it's, many? It's with the original cast, though, right? How many yeah, Halloween so, movies are there? There's so, like let's, eight, let's, nine. Let's, let's recap. <laughs> So this, this too many. Yeah, there's too many. Um, this first <laughs> Halloween movie that came out in 1978, John Carpenter did, of course, and he did a sequel to that. So oh when they God. made this 2018 one, they, of course, they scrapped two. They are like, we're going to go straight from one, and this is a sequel to one, and we're going to go from there. Right. Um, and that was, that was with Lori. Lori brought, Strode. Before. They brought her back, yeah. Uh, brought her Jim back, Harris. and like we did this whole thing. Why are we making two more? I think because Blumhouse realized how much money they made in Universal, yeah. so they're going to capitalize it on again, and they know so people will go watch it. <laughs> I feel like this could go one of two ways just in like movie history. You either like you either have this this 2018 Halloween movie where you brought back Lori, you brought back these character this strong character that she's getting back at, you know, she wants to get back at Michael and she's ready for him. And then they figure out the the studios figure out they made a whole lot of money doing that. And then they'll add another movie and then another movie and those either they make them well or they don't stand at all. They just they just feel like well we just made so much money on this one let's try to make another money grab on this one, Definitely. and it might not be a good movie it might it might not you know, yeah. and I feel like that's somehow how studios go with that and 
it, I feel like for that, it's going to be a crapshoot. It's like a 50 50 chance. You're either going to have your audience go like you made a great 2018 movie. Why did you do this? Because it just ruined it. Or you can make something surprising. <laughs> but I'm saying like the statistic is probably it's not going to be as great. <laughs> you can make something as great as SCP. Boom. Mm -hmm. No, I would. I mean, I wouldn't go that far. But. <laughs> and, uh, I, I, you know what though? I think that with this character, regardless if these movies bomb or not, people are gonna spend the money to go see him. Um, this, this character is it's too popular, and um, and the, you know these people are gonna go. I have a, a strong feeling though that these movies aren't gonna bomb though. Only be, the only reason I say that is because they're bringing back the director and the writer. Danny McBride and David Gordon Green and John Carpenter is backing them again. Um, Danny McBride shocked me when he wrote this movie because you, you take a guy who who appears in Seth Rogen movies as like usually a stoner, um, you know. You take a guy who's who's hilarious, and then all of a sudden he's writing horror, and I'm just like, okay. When I heard the news he was going to be writing this movie, I was very interested as to what was going to how he was going to do it. Now, I was a little skeptical. Maybe he was going to destroy it and something like that, but we, we, send, we tend to live in this trend now where a lot of these comedians are writing horror movies, and they're amazing. Um, for some reason, I, that's just the thing. Jordan Pill, he took the horror movie world by storm when he wrote Get Out and Us, um, and he's in the Twilight Zone reboot, and he's a producer on that. Um, and then you got John Krasinski, who was Jim on The Office. And you, you watch a show like The Office, and you would never think that that guy, Jim, who used to prank Dwight and make fun of his boss all the time, would write a movie like The Quiet Place. Um, and it, it just shocks me that a lot of these comedians are coming out and, and doing these horror movies. Now you got a guy like Danny McBride who wrote Halloween, and it was a success at the box office and stuff like that. He's going to come back and do the sequels with David Gordon Green directing. And, of course, they brought back uh, John Carpenter to produce and probably do the score again. Um, and they got, of course, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis is coming back for both of them. So my, my, kind of, my, my only worry is that we're going to get a repeat of Halloween 2 or something like that again. That's my only concern. Um, that will get a repeat of a movie that we've already seen. I think people nowadays know not to do that, though. Mm, do they? <laughs> <laughs> you hope not. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I, I can see how this could be a cash grab, but at the same time, like, you have these up-and-coming writers who are coming out of the woodworks that are doing incredible work. So, and I that's mean, totally. I'll, I'll give it a chance. Yeah, I'm if like the second one sucks though. I'm not gonna see the third one. That's totally second one sucks. I'll probably wait for the third one to come to DVD or something and watch it. <laughs> wait for it to come on Netflix. Yep, that, that's exactly it. I just wanted to report on that news real quick because that, of course, this weekend, um, I, the, like the geek I am, I, I shed a tear every weekend, every year that I can't go, which is Comic Con. Um, oh, that was, yeah. That was no, it was this weekend. weekend. Yeah, yeah. this weekend. It's huge. And I, uh, since Wednesday, I've been keeping track on news and. I've just been shedding tears at work and stuff like that just because I can't be there. Is that why they <laughs> released the It trailer this weekend? That's why. That's another thing that they released is the new yeah. It trailer. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of Ooh, It stuff God. out. Yeah. It's really, really freaky. Yeah. Um, so that I looks have, good. I'm going to have a small panic attack. You're not gonna, you don't have I'm not going to watch it in theaters. No. That was your Christmas Do you not like clowns? <laughs> hmm? Do you not like clowns? No, it's not. You know what? I was starting to play with that idea, like that I don't like clown, that I have chlorophobia, but I don't. Because you can walk through boardwalk. Because I can walk through clowns. Clowns don't bother me, but for some reason, it sends me on edge. And there's, we do a segment called Brie Hates Horror because I just, I just don't watch horror movies. So they've been pushing me to watch them so they can see my reactions and laugh at me. But we watched we watched Insidious the other day, and I was just and I was like not I was just watching it like looking at it going like okay and they're like why aren't you scared and I was like because it's not scary. Okay, hold on, let me back up a little bit. I don't know what's going on. I went to go see it in theaters with this girl, and she was having a freaking panic attack. I was having a panic attack. We watched Insidious, which in my opinion is way scarier than it. I don't know, demons are scary. 
Did and you? if anything, you got pissed off. You're like, come find me, demon. Obviously, <laughs> 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 so you guys watched Insidious, right? When it came I, out. I saw I've yeah. seen, yeah. seen them all. Those, yeah. those movies. Yeah. And when something. he's, when, you know, father runs in to, to get, what's his name? Devin? I don't, I don't know. It started with a D. Dolan. Starts to break the break the chains off the kid and like he looks up and the demon is like staring out through the window and everything and I'm all like I look up at it and I'm just watching and I'm all like come fight me bitch like get down here like what are you waiting for <laughs> like, like that was my reaction and she's like why is your reaction like this I'm like I don't know because this isn't scary it's just pissing me off yeah some movies do <laughs> they just straight up piss you off like, like stop messing with them <laughs> I could tell you something funny if you guys ever want to do it just let me know because you will get a kick out of it but every time I go to the movies with this guy and see a horror movie, mm -hmm. half the horror movie, his face is like this. Just oh, <laughs> I'm usually I'm usually asleep. I'm all like, and good night. The other half is probably him sleeping. No, no, no. I don't fall asleep in horror movies. <laughs> I won't take that risk. <laughs> he, he, uh, freaking out. What movie was it that you lucked out of just because you didn't like you? You did. You were doing stuff, but, and then like, oh, it was Annabelle. Annabelle. Um, I, I, we still haven't seen it together. I've seen it twice, um, but we still haven't seen it together. And he's lucked out twice because he didn't really want to go see it. But he had actual serious stuff to do. But I think the other time I invited him, he, like, was like, oh, I'm going out to do with my friends. I was like, all right, you, you got saved this time. But, you know, I mean, <laughs> next time I'm going to get you, so. I watched um, it when we got my tattoo done. I watched you... it. It wasn't that scary. <laughs> if anything jumps, I'm already off, like, I'm already done. So we saw Crawl, and he was getting scared. What's Crawl? Crawl is the movie about the alligators. Alligator one oh, I out. wanted to see that because I like monster movies. That's my yeah. thing. Like, I like like anything creatures, to do with creatures. like creatures and animals and stuff like that. Like I really wanted to see a quiet place. It's just we're so busy like yeah. all the time, like creating and doing stuff, and like I have my like regular job and stuff. There's sometimes I just can't get to the movies. Like quick enough, so I literally watch stuff on like Netflix or like when it comes out after the fact. But and there, I've been busy with Stranger Things. Yeah, and I just finished Stranger Things because I get slammed for not watching that. I think that was probably the best season yet, in my opinion. It was amazing. It was, it was better was than absolutely season eight. He he hasn't seen it yet. I haven't seen it. Oh, okay, I won't oh, say anything. Good. But dang, it's, it's so good. It's good. That that's what I've been trying to tell him, and you know he still hasn't gone on to it. But you know, <laughs> I don't like but watching TV shows by myself. I think that's why, but. That's another. You watch Haunting the Hill House by yourself. No, I didn't. I watched it with friends. Okay, you watch it with friends. <laughs> what can uh, I do? Just watch it. Yeah, just watch it. It's good. It's not like you won't get scared. I mean, no, no, it's not the scary it's, part. It's sci-fi just... and it's 80s pop culture. Great yeah. soundtrack. <laughs> no, I love Stranger Things both seasons, but I haven't watched the third season. Yeah, that's, uh, that's something. So with the continuation of Halloween, though, do you think we'll see all these become mazes at Horror Nights? Well, and that's the, that's the thing. Murdy did say last year that he would love to do every Halloween movie. Now, I don't think we're getting a Halloween maze this year. Um, and with that, I mean, I think he's going to probably wait till next year to start doing um, a Halloween 2018 maze if he does, because that will hype up um, Halloween for 2020. Yeah, 2020. And um, Maybe he'll throw in something exclusive from the Halloween 2020 movie, like he's done in the past with mazes before, like uh, Dracula Untold. He released that maze before it even came out. Uh, he did that with, of course, the Truth or Dare section in um, Horse of Blumhouse, which was not the best maze, but uh, we don't talk about that. Anyway, um, <laughs> he released, he did the scene, of course, the opening scene where they're in the church and you see the nun. That was not in the movie. Um, don't watch that movie. It's it's horrible. I, I wish I can rewind my memory and never watch it, but... Um, Leech it out of your mind. <laughs> um, just don't watch it. Uh, just to save you time, it, it's bad. Um, but yeah, he he's known to doing that. Um, if we're on the subject of Hornets, the one maze I'm waiting to get announced, and I hope we get it at Midsummer Scream. Killer clowns from outer space. It's probably gonna happen. It's probably, I'm not saying it's gonna happen. But that yeah, tent, yeah. that <laughs> tent looked like Killer Clowns. From oh, that space. tent was. I I told this guy immediately, like, it's coming to the event. It's not even a question. It's it's coming. Even you said they were selling Killer Clowns merch last year. They were selling Killer yeah. Clowns merch last year, like, and they had the masks and everything. And I was, I kind of looked at it and was like, why is this here? But yeah. I was like, whatever. I'm like, I, again, I don't want to say anything's coming until it's actually released, because you know. One last thing, um, I gotta ask you, ladies. Will we see 
me and him. What we see you guys are not scary from this year. You will. Uh, I had made an announcement that I was not coming back um, this year, and you will definitely see Jackie. See her. And you will definitely see Alicia. Um, <laughs> I, I am maybe in the works of coming back just oh, for the month of October. <laughs> um, I have a lot of stuff going on from like in the month of September because that's when all the events are gonna hit, like yeah. LHH, uh, 17th Door, obviously Horror Nights, Scary Farm, everything like that. Um, we're even gonna re roll out to Reign of Terror this year and make that drive. Um, but you will possibly, and it will be most likely 90% in this, this decision was literally just made a couple days ago because I was talking to my manager. I will possibly be making an appearance from October 4th to October 31st. Um, somewhere, we don't know. Somewhere. I don't know what means, I'll, look, I'll, I'll yeah. be on the lookout though. <laughs> so well, I don't know, because we were just talking about that. We're like, what if you just don't like, I'm like, well, if I go on standby and they pull me to another maze, they pull me to another maze. But I told them, I'm like, I can only work till October 31st because on the first we are on a plane heading over to Orlando Nice. Um, and we will be going to Orlando HHN. Nice. Um, I, I have here. one favor. If you do see both of us at the event, scare the fuck out of this guy. <laughs> don't hey, even have to try. Hey, you don't even have to like. You don't even have to like pop out or anything. All you gotta do is show your face, and he'll get scared. Guarantee I'll just be like, boo. Hi. Hi. <laughs> just boo. I'll, yeah. That, we'll that's all you gotta do. We'll we'll just do my have one every. Boo scare. Boo! We'll have every monster just chase him. Just, that's, that I'm not going to run. That will make for some good content, though. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to run. We prefer um, you to do it. You could just fall down in a little pile. <laughs> like, like, jump in a planner. Hide in a trash can. Um, no. Ladies, I would love to uh, thank you for being on the show today. Um, I can't wait to get back together with you guys at Midsummer Scream. If you guys want to see this guy get scared at Midsummer Scream, we're going to walk through some of the mazes, so that, that should be fun. Yes, um, that that will be fun to see, um, but ladies, thank you so much for being on the show, and thank you for talking a little bit about your guys' project. SCP eight two five Fear the Foundation is out now on Fractured Compass Productions, so go check it out if you guys haven't already. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry if you guys watch this first and then go check it out, but I still suggest you go check it out. Yeah. Because, uh, and then yeah. watch it fifteen times. And then watch it fifteen more times. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, again, a big thank you to Fracture Compass Productions for sending me an early cut of the of the film, so I can uh, check it out, review it, um, put it on my social media, promote it, and stuff like that. And no way did they pay me to do that. I just did that because I thought it was such a good horror film that it needs to get out there and stuff like that. So uh, thank you so much for letting me do that and letting me screen it. And uh, like I said, if you guys ever need anybody to screen something, I'm here. Hey, you're on the list, buddy. You're on our. You're on our. Uh, you're on the list now. now. I'm on the list. <laughs> Oh, you've like, made the list. Like Jericho. I'm on the list. list. You're official. <laughs> you're a part of our, our screening and preview team. Sweet. <laughs> um, so, uh, again, thank you so much for being on the show, and I can't wait to get back to, together with you guys at Midsummer. Looking yeah. forward to it. Talking. Uh, be sure to be there at Midsummer Scream. We're going to be doing three podcasts, uh, two on Saturday, one on Sunday. Um, and the Sunday we are doing is, of course, with Fracture Compass Productions right after the Not Scary Farm panel. We're going to talk a little bit about what we've learned on the panel, um, if they announced anything, what they have announced. Um, I so don't know what's going to be there this year uh, for at least one maze. So, yeah. you, know. Right. you know, I'm no. excited. I'm excited to see when they, uh, well, you don't what they announce. Don't know anything. <laughs> uh, no, but no, they, they, I, I, I'm excited to see what they announced this year. should be really good. Um, I'm always a fan of Not Scary Farm. I've been going the last like three or four years now. I've been a couple times before that, but in a row. Um, I've been trying to make it a yearly thing, but uh, thank you so much for being on the show, and of course, we will see you guys in the next one. Yay. Peace. Thanks for having us. You're awesome. See you guys later. Bye. <laughs>